Hello, my name is Keith Hill and I'm with Omron Automation and Safety. Today I'm going to be covering the fixed blanking option using our F3SG-RA safety global light curtain. Presently on the receiver portion of the dip switches, dip switch SW1 and SW2, position number 8 is in the on condition, allowing me to use SD Manager 2 to set the settings for the light curtain. I have done a factory reset to the light curtains. If you need to know how to do that, please see our YouTube video on recovering factory default settings. Okay, now that we've gone in and done all that, we need to go and uh, select fixed blanking. And that'll bring up the fixed blanking window. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to log on to the light curtain. Now, before you log on to the light curtain, make sure it is safe because once you log on, it puts the light curtain into a programming mode and monitoring will not be available. So to log on, we're going to go and select administrator level radio button. And if you have not put in a password into the light curtain, the factory default is four zeros. If you have a previously installed password, you'd have to enter that in now and then say OK. We'll give the software a couple seconds and it will show us that we are actively monitoring the light curtain in the present state. Right now I've got a object that's blocking beams one through three in place and then this portion is unblocked. If I put my hand in there, you can see it's an active monitoring of the condition of the light curtain. If I have multiple light curtains in series, they will show up here. So if I want to do settings for channel one, I click here. If I had another beam uh, or light curtain in series, I click on that if I need to set that one up. So depending on how many or which ones you need to set up, you need to make sure you select them up here. In this case, I just have a single light curtain. So I have the ability also within this area, I could use this pull down here to zoom in to a certain amount of beams. And then I could use the slider to see, so it's more like a zoom in function. Or I can come back to the full state of the light curtain. I also down here have the ability to change the uh, lower axes to show number of beams or sensor length in millimeters. In this video, I'll just keep it as the number of beams. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to want to do is enable this function by clicking the enable radio icon. I do have the ability to set up three zones within the light curtains itself. So the first, I'm going to set up the first one now, so I'll just make sure this is set to 1. And then I have the ability to do two different ways of setting. I can set manually, or I can do use the teach-in option. For this video, I'm just going to use manual operation. Within manual operation, we could either select our beams from designating it from a chart, or using the pull downs to select the beams that are being blocked. If I enable the designate from a chart, you'll get two red bars. I can go in and I can select by right clicking on this bar and moving it up to the top portion of my blocked beams. If my object is floating, I can then come down to this one right click on it and then move it up if I choose to do that as well. So in this case the beams 2 and 3 would be my active zone. If I don't want to use that option I can keep that clicked off and then I could use the pull downs to then go and select beams 1 through 3 as being my locked out beams. If I select recover status at readout it does a quick read from the light curtain 
and will reset everything that you've done. So it's just basically if it's if you get messed up, not sure where you're at, you can do a fact uh, recover factory status. All right, now that I've gone and selected my beams one through three, I need to confirm the zone by clicking on confirm zone. And you'll notice that the software now indicates beams one through three as being my uh, fixed zone. If I then choose to select another one, I'd come down and select beam num or zone number two and do that same procedure over for zone two. Now there are certain precautions on setting up multiple zones. Please consult the manual to make sure that you're doing that correctly. All right. Now that we've got that all done, we can come down here and then we can choose how we want the light curtain to react if we remove the object. If I click on this pull down, I have three choices. By default, it's set for lockout. In a lockout condition, if I remove the object, I will set the output to the light curtain to the off condition. So. If I need to re-establish the, the, blank, uh, the blanking zone, I need to put the object back in. And I need to either cycle power or hit the reset button to actively restate the fixed blanking zone. If I choose disable monitoring, you need to be a little careful on this one because what happens there is, is if I remove the object, this portion, the output will not turn off, and then this portion is still kind of in a blanked zone. This portion up here is still an active zone. So if I put my hand up here, it will trip the light curtain. But if I happen to put an object, my hand in here or some, uh, or some other object in there, it will not be caught by the light curtain, and it will... Um, it could be kind of dangerous. So selecting this option, you need to make sure you know what you're doing. On a blanking zone cancellation, if I select that and I remove the object, the light curtain defaults back to a normal light curtain. So all beams of the light curtain will be active again. In order to reinstate the fixed blanking zone, I need to put the object back into the light curtain and then in this case, I will need to cycle power to the light curtain to reenact the fixed blanking zone. So for now, I'm just going to go and keep it in lockout. And then our next setup here is to select the number of allowable beams. We can select, select an upper beam or lower beams. So in this case, if I go in and I select one for my upper beam, and it's indicated in white down here. If my object is has vibration to it, and it could be possible that beam number three gets unblocked because of this vibration, but yet it's still an okay condition, then you would want to set a number of beams to one. So that anything from three down to two, if this third beam kind of becomes unblocked because of vibration, it will still be in a good condition. I do have the ability to do that also on my lower beam as well. But in this case, I'm not uh, sitting down at the lower portion of my light curtain, so I won't need to do the lower portion. And I could just keep the upper portion selected as beam number one. Okay, so now that we have this all set up, we can come back to the top. Nope, actually we need to go and download it to the light curtain. So to download it, we come to this icon and we click on right configuration. The right configuration list will come up, which will show us in yellow all the things that we have gone and set different from what the light curtain is presently set for. So you can go and review what you're doing there. If everything is fine, you can go and click on the right button. This will write the settings to the light curtain. Okay, so now the light curtain has been uh, programmed. Now what we need to do is come back to the monitor and set the light curtain back into monitoring state. And the software will ask you, is this okay? You can say okay. Give it a couple seconds. The light curtain will become active. 
Okay, now that we've gone and set the light curtain to an active state, we can come back to the top of the page, go to Monitoring, and click on Start Monitoring. You'll see that it gives you an active condition of the light curtain. So if I block it and unblock it, you can hear my safety output turning on and turning off. And then I have my uh, fixed blinking zone and active. So this ends the presentation of setting the F3 SG-RA safety global light curtain into a fixed blinking zone condition. Thank you very much and have yourself a great day.